Hi, it's Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to use the June Taylor pre-printed batting to make this adorable Christmas stocking. It's pre-quilted um, on both sides and it has a cute little lining. This is the Swell Christmas Collection from Moda. And I love decorating for Christmas and I love the retro Christmas fabrics that are out right now. It's so fun with the June Taylor pre-printed batting. And we've done some other projects with that. You'll be seeing more of the pre-printed batting. I love projects that are done when you're done. You don't have to now go and quilt them. So that's what I think I love the most about the pre-printed batting. When you get your holiday stocking um, quilt as you go batting, it looks like this. You've got your two halves of your stocking and you can see the lines, the shape of the stocking and numbers. Now the numbers go one uh, all the way through. Let's see how high up do they go on this one. Looks like number eight on this one. And then they pick up here on number nine, 10, 11, 12. So they keep you moving along uh, with the numbering system. And I wanted to show you if this is a brand new product, you've never used something like this. I want to show you how easy and fun it is. We had an absolute blast and I can't wait to make more of the stockings and fill up my mantle and decorate my whole house this year in Swell Christmas. Um, you'll want to choose your, what they're calling a backing, but it's really the lining. It's the inside of the stocking. We have chore, chore, we couldn't resist Santa being on the back. Um, now they're very specific to not press out your batting. It could shrink it, it could distort it. So we went ahead and spray basted this to our background fabric, which is now gonna become the lining. This is the red um, uh, Christmas Santa. We also went ahead and stitched around the shape. That's also included in your instructions with the pre-printed batting. We went ahead and uh, printed, sewed that down on the line so everything is secure. Now you'll decide how you want your strips organized. And of course we had to have Santa in the middle, which is right here. That piece just lays down. Now, I, the, the, the part I'm working with is not the stocking that starts with number one through eight. I've got the stocking that starts, starts with number nine and goes all the way through number, let's see, 16. So in this particular case, I'll start with nine and I'm just laying my strip down. Piece 10, let's see what piece we had next. It looks like this one. Unlike quilting, where you would expect to lay that strip right next to it, right sides together and sew, you're going to shift that to make sure you're fully covering that space. And once you're sure that you are, and I have plenty of fabric there, I'm gonna go ahead and just go right sides together. I'm gonna pin that together, take that to a sewing machine, and I'm gonna use the quarter inch seam allowance. If you've got a walking foot, this might be a nice thing. You're sewing with batting. Kind of just grabs all the layers together. With a Bernina, there's a dual feed system. This is the Bernina um, 70, 770. It has a dual feed system, which is now engaged. So I basically have feed dogs on the top and the bottom. It's one of my favorite features of using the Bernina for projects like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start, it's not critical. I can start outside of my blue lines. On certain projects from June Taylor's pre-printed batting, it's important you start on that blue line. Here I can start before it and it's not gonna have any bearing on the project. So if you start a little before, that's fine. Let's, and you don't need to backstitch. So we'll just sew our quarter inch seam. Now because, just like I mentioned, not, not ironing is a good thing. I've ironed batting before and it definitely created a kind of a shrunk in that area. I was ironing just a, a wrinkle out but not the rest of the batting. And it did shrink it just a little bit and it also created a little bit of distortion. So for that reason, I'm not gonna use heat right now. And instead of using a steam or a hot iron, I'm gonna use the clover roll and press to get that seam nice and flat. It gets the same mission done of opening up that seam, but I'm not applying heat, which is definitely not recommended at this point. Then you'll come back and you'll put in your next strip. And let's decide what that was. Looks like they used, I think they used this one. Same thing, 
make sure you're filling that spot that not, you're not up here or you're going to miss this section. You're going to adjust that till you know it's where it needs to be. Right sides together, start here, sew there and flip. And you're going to be going back and forth. The project goes back and forth like this all the way. Then, once you have that done, let me show which that that looks like. Okay, looks like we got a little bit further down the road. And let me get this one. This is all the strips sewn together here. So, <laughs> when we got all the strips on, we're like, okay, now how do we how do we see this line to cut out the shape of the stocking? Because this is what we're going for. This is the other half of that. This is what we're, we're go our goal is. But we can't see the lines. But remember how we went ahead and sewed the shape of that stocking? That's why. Because now we'll be able to go and sew or cut directly on that. This is the, I love these scissors. This is the Bordeaux 200 from Clover. These scissors, while they are a little on the spendy side, are fantastic. Tammy was saying everybody in the sewing room is always wanting and grabbing for these scissors because they're so sharp, so precise. They just cut beautifully. They're comfortable in your hand. So we're just gonna cut out the shape on that stitch line. That's why you sewed your stocking. Because remember how your stocking was basted uh, actually spray basted to your backing fabric, right? Your batting was already spray basted to your your backing. So you really didn't necessarily need to stitch that down, but this is why. Because this is your guide now of how to cut this out. Okay. So now I have my two halves. And as you would expect, you will have right sides together. Pin that. You'll sew your quarter inch seam allowance. You might even go a little bit more than that. Just, uh, and that's when you really want to use a walking foot. You've got a lot going on here. So your quarter inch all the way around. You're going to turn that out. And then your instructions will guide you into creating your batting, excuse me, your binding. And then you have a little hanging tab. Now, if you're not sure about the binding aspect of it, Following this video will be the magic binding video. Tammy has such a cool way to do the binding where you really can't see the beginning and the end. So I recommend that technique. So I hope you learned, uh, enjoyed learning how to use the Quilt As You Go June Taylor batting. It's so much fun. Be sure to pick up your kits available at Shabby Fabrics.